our beloved mercenaries. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. Thank you one and all for your hard work fighting in the first Punic War. Would have been nice if you'd won. Maybe tried a little harder. But this isn't the finger pointing convention. No, it's not. I know you all have one thing on your mind. Money! Hey, when are we all getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Give yeah, me to my editors, why don't dude. You tell them. I'm not telling them. You tell them. Ugh. Look, you're not getting paid. What? We lost the first Punic War and owe the Romans a ton of reparations. Of course, we can't pay you in full. Let's burn this place to the <laughs> ground. <laughs> hey, hey! Don't burn this place to the ground. Come on, fellas. Will killing us really make you feel better about your money? Yes. <laughs> Way to go, sir. Shut up, Jim. Problem You're with mercenaries. Fired. I guess that makes two of us. <laughs> In the aftermath of the First Punic War, Carthage's disgruntled mercenaries, left unpaid for all their hard work, revolted and Carthage found itself caught up in an extremely destructive mercenary war. The panicked Carthaginians hired more mercenaries to fight the mercenaries they couldn't afford to pay, <laughs> and Carthage came dangerous. <laughs> what? That, just... <laughs> that's fucking Nighthead. That's crazy. That's, that's like the U.S. government, bro. <laughs> fucking dead on so dead. Close to collapse. <laughs> All the while, across the water, there was Rome. Ha! Look at those morons. We just kicked their ass in the first Punic War, and now their own mercenaries are revolting. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Wait, first Punic War? Do you mean there's going to be a second one? Well, we're definitely taking advantage of this situation. So almost certainly, yes. The Romans did, in fact, take advantage of this situation. Amongst the chaos, rebels on the Carthaginian island of Sardinia sent out a cry for help to Rome. Hot diggity dog, said the Romans. I see. That's free real estate. And so in, they went. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's our island. Get the hell off. Hey, they requested our help. We're simply helping. Oh, no, you don't. Look, we're sending our own army to deal with the rebels, okay? But just to be clear, we're not trying to start a fight with you. <laughs> so, you know, don't declare war on us or anything. War. <laughs> we surrender. Great. And as part of the peace treaty, we get to keep these islands. <laughs> Outplayed. No! The Carthaginians were hopping mad. As if their humiliating loss in the First Punic War wasn't bad enough, the Romans now took advantage of their mercenary problem and stole their islands. This shocking land grab was pretty hard to justify, even by Roman standards. Additionally, the Romans now demanded Carthage pay them even more money <laughs> on top of what was already owed. If Rome was trying to make Carthage as mad as possible, they were doing a fantastic job. Yeah, the seeds of a second Punic War were being sown like post -World and War. they were being watered with Carthaginian tears. Resentment in Carthage only continued to grow. Eventually, Carthage solved their mercenary problem thanks to Carthaginian military genius and hero of the First Punic War, Hamilcar. Bob Hamilcar? He sorted those naughty mercenaries Where's out Hamil with some Where's good not Hamilton. Where's Hannibal? And the destructive mercenary war was over. I don't think he spanked Still, them. All was not well in Carthage. This is his dad? Okay. Ago, they were the top dogs in oh, the Western sheesh. Mediterranean. Now, after the crushing defeat Father in the and First son? Punic War and a huge bill to pay the Romans, Carthage was well and truly under Rome's thumb. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth were they supposed to do? If they wanted any chance at regaining their former strength, there was one thing they needed now more than anything. Money! Money. <laughs> but as long as they owed Rome a bazillion dollars, just don't pay there was for nothing it. They could do. Fortunately for them, amongst their ranks, there was one big hunk of a man <laughs> with one big clump of a brain. Me! Hamilcar Barca! Yes! Wait, why do you all have the exact same voice? <laughs> I have it too. <laughs> That's right. Hero of the First Punic War. Okay. Greatest general alive. And the poster above <laughs> my bed. Hamilcar Barca had an idea. All right. We need money? Well, I've got one word for you. Spain. An area filled with lucrative silver mines from which the silver would flow like a river. 
And our pockets would be stuffed, like Tony's mother at a buffet. Hey, so here's my proposal. You send me with an army to Spain. I'll expand our territory, get those silver mines up and running, and we'll be able to pay the Romans back in no time. Genius. Okay. But just to check, you're not secretly raising the money to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree against Rome, are you? Because we can't afford that. Hanno, my dear, I'm simply going to pay them back. Well, that wasn't reassuring. Few in Carthage were as bitter about their loss in the First Punic War as Hamilcar Barca. 98% of his brain matter had been reallocated to thoughts of revenge. He was also fed up with the Carthaginian politicians for what he deemed a cowardly betrayal when they surrendered at the end of the last war. And so for Hamilcar, going to Spain meant being able to act independently well, he does go to Spain. weak Carthaginian Okay, I thought he was government, taking the money just building to... his own strength. I see. And then perhaps somewhere down the line, revenge. However, I see. He's getting away from the government. He wasn't going to Spain okay. by himself. Hannibal? Yes, father? Would you like to come with me to build an empire in Spain? Uh, oh, boy, yeah. Training arc. Hey, Barbara, mind if I take our nine-year-old son with me? I want to implant an intense hatred of Rome in him and prepare him for a glorious campaign of vengeance. <sighs> Just try not to traumatize him, dear. No promises. <laughs> the young boy Hannibal would accompany his father. Watching, learning. Yeah, it does boy, feel like after World War One. You see that city over there? Yes, father? That is Rome. Do you know what we do to Romans? No, father. We hate them, Hannibal. <laughs> we hate them with every fiber of our being. I didn't know this. I didn't father. know Hannibal's dad Didn't was... I just play with my Digimons? No, son. <laughs> they took everything from us. Our land, our wealth, our pride. Those animals. I'll tear them limb from limb. I'll burn their pathetic city to the ground. <laughs> dad? I'm sorry, son. I've, I've just never been so proud. Keep going. I'll slaughter their people. Okay. <laughs> I'll cut off their faces and wear them as masks. <laughs> I love you, son. After taking Hannibal it's really heartwarming to the bonding. Ball and having him swear an oath never to be a friend of Rome, off dad and son went for their lovely beach holiday in Spain. But Spain was already inhabited by many tribes people. And when Hamilcar suddenly showed up in their territory, they were like, hey, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? I'm teaching my son how to become a warrior like me. Aw, well, that's sweet. Well then, little guy, let's see what you got. <laughs> Good boy. As Hamilcar got to work fighting the tribes of Iberia and expanding Carthaginian influence, Hannibal became a child of war. Okay, he grows up in it. From a young age, and he grew to become a great military leader himself. That's kind of sick. his father very proud. I love you so much, son. <laughs> Dad, not in front of the enemy. <laughs> You killed that guy so well, son. <laughs> the Barkas successfully consolidated Carthaginian power, got those silver mines up and running, wow, and the were plan sending worked. buckets of cash back to a money-starved Carthage, and symbolizing Carthage's regrowing strength. A beautiful new city would eventually be founded in Spain. New Carthage, with a magnificent palace at its center. Carthage is back, back baby! baby! What in the name of Apollo is going on here? Huh? Romans! Flowing silver mines? <laughs> Dancing elephants? What are you up to, Hamilcar? I'm simply gathering the money to pay you back. Oh. Well, okay then. Or are try you to take it over? building strength to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Like I said, Claudius, <laughs> I'm simply trying to pay <laughs> you back. Aw. They did a really good job with the you animations. Guys are hugging. No, we're not. I was. I was hugging. <laughs> Hamilcar had practically carved out a kingdom for himself in Spain, free from the meddling Carthaginian politicians. Took him a year? Yeah, but this is great. This is like... Coming immense. But dad, yes, my son? I'm confused. Are we really simply paying the Romans back? We're not going to go on a bloodthirsty revenge spree? Of course we are. I'm just saying that to get the Romans off our backs. Listen, here's the most important life lesson I have for you. Vengeance is everything. An all-encompassing thirst for vengeance <laughs> is great for your mental health. Are you still confused? <laughs> no, no, I get it now. That makes but sense. What if the Romans find out what we're up to? They won't find out. Why? Well, Hannibal, because I use NordVPN. <laughs> 
I'm confused again. <laughs> Do you like your computer being hacked, all your passwords being stolen, and used to create Holy a fake virtual shit, it's your Nord! mom's bank account? Me neither. And that's Ethical why I react. Use Nord VPN. Ethical react. These days, hackers are only getting smarter. While oh, I'm gonna get cereal while this plays. Whether it's convincing phishing attacks, fake Wi-Fi networks, or clicking your aunt's Facebook post that opens the door to a hacker party on your device, you need to protect yourself from online threats with NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to connect to secure servers that encrypt your data and keeps you NordVPN. safe by blocking malicious NordVPN. websites NordVPN. with their threat protection NordVPN. With buy NordVPN, it, buy you can also buy connect it. to other territories and take advantage of better deals or content oh. not available in your country. And if you don't like it, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Peanut butter crunch. So go to NordVPN.com. Peanut butter crunch. Goldgram's are already gone. Simplified to get an exclusive deal with a huge discount and four extra months. That's NordVPN.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Carthaginian Tears. A Child of War. And the Carthaginian conquest. I did not know Spain. Hannibal's background at all. It's actually really interesting. Had been staggeringly quick, and Rome was seriously alarmed. <laughs> they thought but they, they couldn't pay. Also preoccupied <laughs> it's like with ongoing <laughs> wars elsewhere, ah. including an expansionist war to the north, where they were enslaving thousands of northern Celts. So for now, to keep Carthage in check, the Romans insisted on a new treaty. See this river. The two sides agreed that everything above it was in Rome's sphere of influence, while beneath it was Carthage. Under no circumstances were the Carthaginians to expand north of that river. But for now, Hamilcar and son were living it up. Well, son, here's to many more years of successful campaigning in Spain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just have to go fight those guys. See you later, Does son. Does he die? I love you. <gasps> <laughs> What the? <laughs> oh, crap. I drowned? Oh, well. Always remember, son. You are vengeance. It's your time, Hannibal. Also, delete my browsing history. Hamilcar Barca was tragically ambushed at a river and drowned. His son-in-law, and possibly also his lover, what, excuse me, <laughs> took charge for a while. But he too was later assassinated, <laughs> leaving finally at 26-year-old Hannibal in Holy charge shit. of the Carthaginian armies in Spain. 26, he Sources definitely smokes in. Readily accepted him as their leader. He chose to suffer the same hardships as his men. He lived in the same Giga conditions. Was Giga the first into battle and the last one out. And it also helped that he looked a lot like his dad. He had the total respect of his men. If he said jump, they said how high. If he said tuck me in, they said how tight. If he said talk to a girl without peeing your pants, they said that's impossible. Nobody can do that. An army that would follow him anywhere would be crucial for exacting his vengeance against Rome. Hannibal's army had become a strong and loyal fighting force, and that was making a certain nation very <laughs> uncomfortable. Seeing Carthage re-strengthened so quickly was not something It's Rome so similar to post-World War Germany, which is crazy. Paying off their debts and expanding their territory. It didn't feel very much like Carthage was under Rome's thumb at all, and Rome wanted to put an end to it. Tensions were strung tighter than your liar's G-string, <laughs> and all it would take was one incident to trigger all-out war. And in 219 BC, a city in Spain would find itself at the very center of that fateful incident, Saguntum. Remember that treaty declaring everything south of this river to be Carthage's sphere of influence? Well, Saguntum should therefore obviously be Carthaginian, right? Wrong! Saguntum had actually scored itself so an these nuts. Yeah, exactly. alliance with Rome after Rome had helped it with an internal dispute. With Carthaginian encroachment, Saguntum began to fear for its independence, and Rome declared itself Saguntum's protector. But this clearly went against the Ebro <laughs> River Treaty. So what on earth was Rome doing? Were the Saguntines and the Romans truly just BFFs? Look at that it's love. Possible. Or was Rome deliberately trying to interfere with Hannibal's Spanish expansion and maintain a staging post for a future war with Carthage? 
More likely. <laughs> and Hannibal certainly viewed this Rome Saguntum alliance as an outrage. Seems kind of dumb from the Roman side, though. Of Roman arrogance. At first, he left Saguntum alone. But having learnt from his father to hate all things Roman, and having inherited his father's dream of bringing Rome to its knees, they want war? more and more, Hannibal I mean, may have begun yeah, to I guess. see Maybe Rome wants to start it. as an opportunity. Could this controversial alliance be just what devilish little Hannibal needed to kickstart a second <laughs> war with Rome and restore Carthaginian <laughs> dominance? It's even possible that Rome. We're also using Saguntum to goad Hannibal into a fight I see, yeah, so yeah. they could go and kick him out of Spain. And as the two giants began gearing up for round, round two, two fight. the poor people of Saguntum had no idea that they were about to be crushed in the collision. Hey, your alliance with Saguntum is an insult and we won't stand for it. There are friends, Hannibal. I don't know how Rome can lay a finger on them. Cross the act of war. See yeah, though, Back so easily and reinforce. War, hey? I was thinking I might just besiege their city and massacre their people. I hope you do, Hannibal. Find out what no, happened. I understand yeah, both. <laughs> do, Hannibal. Wait, I mean, your supply line, line you know? It feels like it's, you're fighting all. far uh, from okay, home. Then. It's fine, hard. Fine. Okay, guess I'll do just that. Consul, we look forward to it. Consul? You're going to protect us, though, right, Consul? Consul! Oh, no! To top it all off, when the Saguntine people made the genius decision of raiding into Carthaginian territory, enough was enough. In an action that was guaranteed to provoke the Romans into war, Hannibal besieged the city. The siege of Saguntum lasted eight cruel months before Hannibal broke through the city defenses and turned Saguntum into a killing Yikes. field. Yikes! It was a massacre. Okay. What the hell? <laughs> it's not really <laughs> cool. Tell me I didn't just catch you massacring <laughs> our friends, the Sugantees. <laughs> well, Consul, if you like the Sugantees so much, perhaps you okay. should suck on these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Hearing word of the attack on Saguntum, Rome was understandably in an uproar, and all eyes were now fixated on what would happen next as Rome sent a delegation to Carthage, led by one of the most highly esteemed Roman senators, Fabius Maximus. He demanded an answer for Hannibal's sins. All right, listen up, scum. You've got a rogue general in Spain attacking a Roman ally. What are we supposed to do about it? Well, there shouldn't have even been a Roman ally in Spain. You're the aggressor here. Hand Hannibal over to us as a criminal. Oh, so we shit. Can punish him severely. No, yes, no. No yes. way they give up Hannibal. I hold in the folds of my toga both peace and war. <laughs> Which one should I let drop? <laughs> Whichever one you want, then I choose. The Second Punic War had begun. <laughs> Pack That's it insane. up, boys. We've got him. We already destroyed these clowns. No once, way, Rumo we were loses. The underdogs. Now we're the overdogs. Hot dogs. Exactly. This is gonna be E. Rome. Z. Rome. Rome. Here's the plan. Consul Longus, you take your army. And I've seen Gladiator. They never Carthage. lose. Burn that city Where to the is? ground. And Consul Scipio. You just head on over to Iberia and make sure this Hannibal guy doesn't do anything crazy. I mean, what's he gonna do? Two front Cross war. the Alps? <laughs> <laughs> We're no going fucking to way. what? No Cross fucking way, dude. Alps. We're going to what? A moron. what? I just told you, Hannibal will freeze to death. Trust me, Jerome. The Romans are expecting us to fight the same way we did last time. Passively, taking no initiative. They think it's gonna be E Z. So this time we have to be aggressive. We have to go on the attack. It sickens me to say this, but this time we have to be a little more Roman. Oh. You mean we're gonna take poops and baths together? But I'm insecure <laughs> about my hairy legs. No, I'm saying this time we're gonna take the fight to them. Think about it. Rome thinks they're simply going to invade us and win the war. So when they suddenly find themselves being invaded from the north, They'll freak out, like Tony's mother when the buffet runs out of shrimp. Hey, so I true. Gotta admit, it's actually kind it's of genius. genius. And my hairy legs will insulate me from the cold. That's the spirit. Well, Hannibal, you can't get elephants through the Alps. 
and my spear and my legs. <laughs> Ugh. Hannibal's plan, a daring alpine trek to surprise the Romans, was a bold but risky strategy. If it paid off, he could catch the Romans with their pants down, but he could also end up losing a ton of men and supplies in the hostile mountain conditions. Nevertheless, in 218 BC, with a fire in his eyes and some vengeance in his belly, Hannibal brought his force of almost 100,000 men across the Ebro River. They spent months on the road, trekking through the cold, hostile mountain conditions. And when they finally reached the other side, That's so they crazy. Said, Hooray! We did it! We crossed the Alps. No, those were the Pyrenees. Those are the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> After crossing the Pyrenees, the army then had to pass through southern Gaul, a vast territory filled with tribespeople, many of whom were hostile to Hannibal's presence. Right. His journey to the Alps was an ordeal in itself, as he was forced to fight his way through and incurred pretty hefty losses before even reaching the mountains. This is, it is pretty his insane. This worked. almost stopped in its tracks entirely as the Roman consul so far on his way to Iberia discovered Hannibal was right on his doorstep. <laughs> Suddenly, Hannibal's <laughs> journey became a race oh, shit. as he rushed to get his <laughs> massive army across the vast Rhone River before the Romans could intercept him. The crossing was chaotic, with the panicking elephants causing several men to drown. And the first combat. You got to imagine when, when this is happening, you're feeling from each side encountered pretty low another. morale. When Scipio finally caught up to Hannibal's position, what he found was an empty Carthaginian camp. Hannibal had slipped through his fingers. Bro is cooking nothing. What is Hannibal doing? That's what you would have thought, right? <laughs> Like, if you're in the army at this time and everyone's like, yeah, let's do this, Hannibal, and you're just fucking wandering through hostile tribes, over mountains, Romans catch you early. I, you gotta feel like, <laughs> this is fucking stupid. We're not even close to Rome yet. The Roman consul Scipio felt the weight of the situation. Quite unbelievably, Hannibal was going to cross the Alps into Italy, and the Romans had no idea where he would emerge. For the first time, a Carthaginian force had the Roman homeland under threat. Scipio sent his men onto Iberia as planned, but he himself rushed home to raise a new army so that if Hannibal survived the cross... This is the dumb part. This is the dumb part. You know what he should have done? Base race, dude. Classic base race. Hannibal's gone in the Alps. You land in Iberia. You fucking push through the... You take all the silver mines. Hit them from both sides. They take all of Rome, you take all of fucking Carthage. Switch, switch, yeah, exactly. Expect at him, dude. Scipio would be there, waiting. Would you look at that, boys? We're here, in the Alps. Although it is a little later than I expected. Yeah, it's kind of chilly. We'll set up camp here and wait for spring, right? It's way too cold, right? Hannibal? <laughs> Hannibal's famous crossing of the Alps was brutal. That's crazy. It was already autumn, and the men suffered terribly. It was cold. Men would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. They starved. They fell off the sides of icy cliffs. Some sources say they had to eat their pack animals and would finish off dying comrades in order to take their clothes for extra warmth. And then they would fall off the sides of icy cliffs. Imagine an army of 50,000 men with all of their horses, supplies, and 37 elephants trying to navigate the most hostile mountain range in Europe. That's insane. And it wasn't just nature that they were up against. Tribes people lived in the mountains, and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. A tribe approached Hannibal and said, Hey man, geez, that's some nice armor. What is that, gold? Man, I'd really like that armor. Hey boss, they've got food as well. Shut up, be cool. Hey, why don't you let us guide you through this narrow gorge? We're not gonna kill you or nothing. Just walk right on through there. We're not gonna kill you. It's just right this way. <laughs> We're not gonna kill you. Hannibal's army were forced to fight their way through the gorge as massive boulders rained down on them from above. Some clever reorganization of his line helped. Have they ever made a movie about this? This would be a cool movie. I would love to see a dramatization of this whole arc of history. Vin Diesel wants to? Oh, God. <laughs> Does anyone else want to? 
does anyone else want to? I don't want to hear about how the fucking Carthaginians were family, bro. Them survive, and they were able to fend off the opportunistic tribes. But losses from the, the constant rock. attacks were heavy. <laughs> the rock is Hannibal Barca. Men who went over the sides would get stuck on the ice sheets below and had to make a grisly choice between starving to death or just getting it over with. When the deeply demoralized army reached the summit and rested for a couple days, Hannibal tried to lift their spirits with a rousing speech. Look, men, down there, it's Rome. These plains stretching out in front of you are bountiful with food to eat and Romans to kill. <laughs> Move, Bessie! Look, you have just climbed the walls of Rome. The hard part is over. From here on out, it's all downhill and nobody else will die. <laughs> Except for them. The rest of us here, no one I'm here dies. to fight a battle when you get there, right? <laughs> Starting now. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> as it turned out, the descent was as deadly as the way up. With the cold really starting to set in, the path became even more narrow. And at one point, the men spent three days in the freezing cold, repairing. I would have been so. Road. When they finally pissed. reached the bottom, Hannibal said, "Look, guys, we did it." Oh. Well, I thought it went really well. When Hannibal left Spain, he had about a hundred thousand men. By the time he reached the Italian plains, his numbers had dwindled to about 26,000. He was now caught in enemy territory without a supply line or source of reinforcements. And any elephants who had survived to this point were almost certainly traumatized. So what on earth was Hannibal? I, I can see why everyone, <laughs> like this is such a crazy thing. It really was like stupid. <laughs> like, by all measures, it's, I mean, it's like it worked. So I guess that, Clutches it, but it's like stupid. It's like really stupid. This supposed military genius had just led a starving and weakened army right into enemy territory. Any modern general who lost half their men to mountains would be immediately fired and possibly even depensed on live TV. Yeah, 70,000 people. While Hannibal may not have planned on losing quite so many men, he had almost certainly expected considerable losses. And he always had a plan for how to replace them. Okay. Need men? Northern Italy was full of men. Big, burly Celtic men. Okay. All the men Hannibal would ever need to beat off Rome. Okay. These Celts <laughs> were filled with resentment, having only recently been conquered by Rome. I see. Hannibal hoped to be seen as a liberator, convince the Celts to cut ties with Rome, and instead join him in crushing Rome. That way, he could gain a source of reinforcements and supplies right in Rome's backyard. But sir, in order to win the loyalty of the Celts, we would need to make a seriously favorable impression on them. How do we get him to like us? Hmm. Kill them. One of Hannibal's <laughs> first actions in Italy was to obliterate a nearby tribe who wouldn't join him. This sent a clear message to all the other tribes. It was his wrath they should fear, not Rome's. The realization that a Carthaginian army had just invaded them must have been shocking for the Romans. Yeah. But when they looked at this ragtag group broken by the Alps, they couldn't have felt very intimidated. However, Hannibal was now in Italy, and he was about to embark on one of the most astonishing military campaigns in all of human history. That's cool. The Romans may not have known it yet, but there was now a monster loose in their territory, and he was vying for Roman blood. I mean, this is where he. Okay, part two, baby. Part two, part two, this part two. This video was made possible two. by Incogni. Use code oversimplified in the link below for an exclusive. I gotta know, dude. I gotta know. Let him cook. Incogni plan. Also, make sure to grab our Roman console. Yeah, YouTube's we know about it. Before it's too late. Don't make me mention it a third time, <laughs> or I'll you know what. <laughs> Hannibal's army had survived its famous crossing of the Alps, and he was now in Italy. With Hannibal's arrival, the Roman consul Scipio hit the ground running. In typical Roman fashion, he marched his army straight at the enemy, and Hannibal began preparing for his first combat with Rome on Italian soil. Before the battle, Hannibal wanted to inspire- If he had just lost this battle, this would be one of the history's greatest blunders. <laughs> 
It would have been like one of the biggest like own goals in human history. You marched a hundred thousand men down to twenty six thousand, then lost right on their doorstep. It's, I mean, this is a real clutch or kick moment for your legacy. Because uh, they even knew he was coming, which is crazy. It's not even a surprise. Are his men. So he staged a gladiatorial death match between captured Celt prisoners, with the winner getting prizes and freedom. He then explained that the whole thing was a metaphor. A metaphor? For what? You! These warriors are you! You're trapped in Italy with no escape. Your only choice now is to fight and win. What about the dead guy? That's you if you don't win. And the prizes? That's what you stand to gain by winning. And the fact that I've soiled myself in all this excitement? That... No, that's not part of the metaphor. <laughs> Okay. Hannibal also smashed in the head of a goat. Again, for inspiration. Scipio, Inspiring. on the other hand, now arriving in the area, opted for the more classic route of a rousing pre-battle speech. Didn't Look even bash a goat. Men, weak, starved by the Alps, while we are the strongest military in the world. Overconfidence this will be easy. is a slow like and insidious killer. Horse-sized ducks fighting a baby-sized baby. It'll be like Mike Tyson in his prime, kicking a baby. A tug of war between 10 sumo wrestlers and a... Help me out here, Ralph. A baby, sir? Yes. Yes, that's it. A baby. The point is, there is absolutely no possible way we could lose a battle this easy. So, if everybody's ready, on my mark... <gasps> Charge! Uh oh. The battle of Tachinus was over almost as soon as it had begun, as the Romans found themselves completely outmatched uh -oh. by Hannibal's famed lightning fast Numidian cavalry, a key element in Hannibal's devastating double envelopment tactics. <laughs> in the chaos, Scipio was wounded. Thankfully, according to some ancient writers, his handsome 17 year old son. It is crazy that, like. <laughs> You know, this is an era where send some horses around the back is enough to become one of the greatest generals in history. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> everyone's, you know, like just fucking use the horses come around the back. Uh, that's crazy. Son, Scipio the Younger saw his father. Somebody's gonna be the first. I know Scipio he was. I supposedly saved his father. You stand on the, the process, shoulders of those before you. Himself a lot of daddy's kisses. <laughs> the Romans ended up fleeing the area destroying the bridge behind them as they went for a nation so overtly confident in victory believing hannibal to be an easy kill the romans found themselves running away with their tail between their legs it was humiliating and you know who thought so as well the celts they began flocking to hannibal's side just as he'd hoped even celtic troops fighting for rome in the roman camp began to reconsider man I'm thinking we should try to join Hannibal. I hear you. Maybe we should bring him a gift. What do you think he'd like? Hmm. Oh, I know. Oh, shit. Hey, Hannibal. We want to join your side. <laughs> and we brought you a present. A gift? For me? I hope it's Roman heads. Oh, please. Oh, please be Roman heads. <laughs> How did you know? Running away from Hannibal was humiliating enough, but having dozens of Romans beheaded in the Jesus. Night, now that's embarrassing. Embarrassing. The had been a relatively small battle, but the psychological impact it had early on was Yeah, huge, you want your first one to be a dub. Just a taste of what Hannibal was capable of. Despite the shocking initial loss, however, Rome still didn't seem to fully understand the danger posed by the monster now loose in their territory. The Senate was full of excuses. It's those traitorous Celts. That's why we lost. Yeah, and it was a cavalry battle. Wait until Hannibal faces our almighty legions. And our consul was bold. Once he faces our other fully follicle consul, then he'll really pee his pants. That other consul... Copium, yeah, absolute copium, dude. Sample this time, preparing to invade Africa. He had seen some success, even capturing Malta. But then he heard the news. Hannibal's in Italy? And I'm being ordered home? But, but I was gonna be the big boy! I was gonna invade Carthage and win the war! Well, you can be a big boy at home. No! 
Does somebody need a nap? Base race! No! Base race! No! No! And so Longus brought his army on the long journey north when he arrived in the area to decisively neutralize Hannibal. The two consuls joined their forces together, creating a double consular army. But the two consuls weren't exactly on the same uh -oh. page. Having a nice rest there, old man? I'm wounded, Longus. Pathetic. You don't understand. He's more dangerous than we thought. Maybe for you. Whoops. Listen, we can't just march straight at him like we normally do. We need to train our men through the winter, and we'll try again in spring. Sorry, I don't take advice from a bowling ball. Hey, I'll kick your ass, Longus. Any day now. I'm coming. Just you wait. Oh, Scipio, you feeble old man. <laughs> Scipio was apparently quite cautious after his recent encounter with Hannibal, while Longus, typically Roman, couldn't wait to give Hannibal a swirly. So who would get their way? Well, when two consuls joined their forces, it turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. Okay. They would each take turns being the one in charge. Consul 1 would lead one day, then Consul 2 the next. <laughs> As you what can a imagine, terrible when system! The two consuls didn't agree. Things didn't go so well. <laughs> In this case, due to Scipio's injury, Longus probably assumed even more command than normal. <laughs> Hannibal had Celtic spies in the Roman camp. He fully understood the Roman system and Longus's hot-headed nature, and he knew he could exploit it. For goodness sake! What's wrong, sir? I'm trying to order some pizza, but I keep getting fed all these personalized ads about being a hothead. <laughs> I'm not a hothead, am I? No, sir. Look at this. Butt insurance? Who would buy butt insurance? Yeah, that sounds really stupid. <laughs> sir, it seems like a lot of data brokers have collected data on you. They could sell that data uh, to Hannibal. Ah, NordVPN. Don't worry, because you can get rid of that data with today's wonderful sponsor. Oh, Incogni. Incogni. Hooray! I've been getting at you for some time to protect your personal data online. But Incogni. you're a nimble, aren't you? You didn't do it, did you? Typical. And now would you look at that? Tons of data brokers have collected a heck of a lot of your personal data. And Damn you, data brokers! Like advertisers or insurance companies without you even knowing. Ever wonder where Sally from the Bud Insurance Company got your name, number, address, social security number, and favorite color from? Probably a dirty data broker. We could painstakingly contact the hundreds of brokers that have our data and politely ask them to delete it. That process would only take the average human about 3,000 years. And that's why you need Incogni. I was shocked to find how many data brokers Incogni had tracked. Fucking data brokers, data. dude. But all I had to do was create an Incogni account, give them permission to work on my behalf, then sit back and let them do all the hard work <laughs> for me. And since these data brokers don't stop there, Incogni will continuously work to keep my data safe with an annual plan. So if you want to protect your personal data too, go to incogni.com slash oversimplified to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. As a data broker, please don't do this. <laughs> oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Roman heads, a double consular army, and a hothead. Double consular is crazy. Hannibal That's needed just to bad keep smashing organization. the Romans in battle in order to maintain the loyalty of the Celts. And so he was eager to fight another <gasps> battle. The combined Roman force possibly outnumbered him. So he carefully crafted a clever trap. And he made sure to spring it while Longus was still in charge. The plan began with his army. Getting an early night's sleep. Incredible. All right, boys. Hard to do. Time for lights out. <laughs> Sorry, but we got a big day ahead of us. Tomorrow, we're gonna massacre the Romans. <laughs> Good night, boys. Dream of I wouldn't be able to sleep. I'd be so excited. Gorzog, send out the cavalry. That night, Hannibal's Numidian cavalry made their way over to the Roman camp. Arriving just before dawn. Hey, Romans. Wakey, wakey. What? What the? What's going on? Hey, Longus. Your butt smells like a butt. It does not. Scipio, <laughs> awaken the troops. Longus 
These playground insults are clearly meant to lure you out. Well, it's working. <laughs> Send out the troops. Longus, it's clearly a trap, and I'm falling for it. Send out the troops. Hey, guys, wake up. You're heading out for battle. What? But we haven't had breakfast. We're skipping breakfast. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> As the Romans hurried out of camp, the Numidians began luring them back to the Carthaginian uh... camp, where these gentle angels were just awakening <sighs> from their slumber. <laughs> Eat up, boys. We're having pancakes. Pancakes! While the Carthaginians were enjoying their hearty breakfast, the starving Romans were still on their way. Hurry up! We have to catch those Numidians. Hey, why have you stopped marching? Longus, there's a freezing river in front of us. Well, get your gluteus maximus. This is insane. In <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Time to lather up. This oil will insulate you from the cold. It also smells like lavender. Mm. There's the Carthaginian camp. Get ready to fight, men. S sir? <laughs> I think the water from the river is beginning to ice over. Uh, that's crazy. I can't move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought war would be fun? <laughs> Sitting around a nice hot campfire playing truth out there with your friends? Welcome to the real world! Truth, who do you like? <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, look guys, the Romans are here. <laughs> Having perfectly orchestrated events so that his enemy was cold, tired, and hungry, while his men were well rested and covered and in oil, pancakes. when the two sides engaged one another, the Romans were in no condition to fight. And the cherry on top? The previous night, Hannibal had sent out an elite force of men led by his brother to go and hide behind a bush. They suddenly sprung out, encircling the he exhausted loves Romans, <laughs> who were then cut to pieces. <laughs> Once again, Hannibal's superior cavalry and double enveloping uh, tactics it's the, it's had the that keeps the Romans. But the key word at the back shot strat, was yeah. control. Hannibal used it's his broken, intel dude. on the enemy and the environment of fucking bush camper. <laughs> Fucking somewhat nerf this fucking encirclement strategy, dude. Just fucking camps in a bush, then hits the back. Classic back shots. ...of the battlefield to carefully control the conditions of battle, creating lots of little advantages... What are they going to patch out for? ...that paved the way to success. <laughs> and How is that even fun for him, bro? <laughs> well, you have fun just spamming that over and over? You don't even do anything different? You just spam encirclement? Wow, no, cool. <laughs> Concealing troops for an ambush? All of these things are what make Hannibal the genius he's remembered as today. As for Longus, he managed to escape the battlefield with a small number of troops. Disgraced, he didn't want the Senate to find out what had happened, and he began obscuring communications back to Rome. Longus! Been. We've been looking for you. Uh, nowhere in particular. Longest 30,000 men are missing. What? Do you know where they are? Uh, they're taking a bath. 30,000 men? All in a bath? Yes. That's Longus, fucking crazy. What's under that rug? Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis? Uh, oh, well, that's my consulship over. Good luck with Hannibal. Bye. Trivia. Had been a disaster for the Romans. Oh and shit! As even more Celts began flocking to Hannibal. Rome largely lost its control over Cisalpine Gaul. In Rome, complacency turned to alarm. Uh -oh. Hannibal had outwitted them on their own soil and inflicted a costly defeat. But with that, Scipio and Longus's terms as consul. Yeah, that'll over. do it. They were replaced with two new consuls, Servilius and Flaminius. The Romans may well, many it seems have begun to realize the trouble they badass. were in and the genius <laughs> Hannibal psycho had eyes. shown in invading Italy. The Romans had expected to be the ones controlling this war. Remember, they thought they were going to invade Carthage. Now their plans lay in ruins, and they were levying 11 new legions to deal with the threat. Hannibal had completely redefined the war. But Hannibal had a little problem of his own. Things had gone well so far. But the Celts were notoriously fickle, and Hannibal needed to ensure he maintained their alliance and his base of support in Italy. Any Celts he captured fighting for Rome, he treated extremely well, 
and allowed them to return to their homes. Nice. But the longer he hung around in their territory, eating all their food and leaving <laughs> beard trimmings in their sinks, the more resentful they may become. <laughs> they wanted to go south and plunder some Roman booty. And Hannibal also hoped to sway Rome's other Italian allies in the south to his side. So from here, the path was clear. Hannibal had to move south. Just one problem. There were two main routes Hannibal could so many take goddamn to mountains. the south. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where the two new Roman consuls had taken fortified positions. If Hannibal tried to move on them, he'd be fighting from a disadvantaged position and could be bottled in. What if he encircles them? Option. Ooh, tell me, tell me. We could move through this vast <laughs> impassable marshland flooded with dirty, stinky, disease-infested water that at times would come up to our necks. But Holy shit, no it works that, again! Right? That'd be crazy, right? Hannibal? Hannibal's four-day <laughs> trek across the Arno I did not know about this. Hell on Earth. <laughs> he did Almost two. as crazy as when he crossed the Alps. Imagine three Yeah, bro does have one strat. Sit or lie down <laughs> because there's nowhere to sit or lie down. Meaning four full days without sleep, slugging through heavy mud. You contract cholera. Your foot falls off, and Jim Bob directly in front of you won't stop pooping in your path. In fact, everybody's pooping in your path. Really disgusting. I'm eating Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Would see clumps of mud <laughs> and say, man, I could just sink into that. And then they would. When pack animals died, it gave nearby men a chance to rest, but only for a few moments before they were whipped back into line. Even Hannibal himself couldn't escape the torture of it. Hey, he's got to do it hey, too. Hannibal, if we see a Starbucks, can we stop? I need to take a leak. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Jeez, Hannibal. Looks like you picked up a nasty eye infection. Normally for this sort of thing, we just wash it out with some clean water. But as you can see, water everywhere. But it's full of Jim Bob's poop. No worries, Doc. I'll just take care of it. Ah, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Did he actually do that? $3, when the now possibly one-eyed Hannibal and his army emerged from the swamp, they were shattered. But he had just managed to slip 50,000 men Encircle right men! Encircle men! Into rich Let's go! Lands, where he could replenish his supplies and his Celt allies could go crazy, securing Roman loot and booty. As fields and villages went up in flames, one Roman consul couldn't help but notice the hot-headed Flaminius feeling it was his responsibility to protect these lands rather than waiting for his co-consul to come join him immediately left to go chase Hannibal now this Flaminius was an interesting character he was what the Romans called a new man he came from the lower plebeian classes of Roman society oh new money as a result he reportedly had kind of a screw you attitude to the establishment <laughs> and a big old arrogant chip on his All shoulder. right. Picture Sid Vicious wearing a toga. <laughs> That's Flaminius and Hannibal. Thanks to his spies, kind of he knew everything. Just as with Longus, Hannibal knew Flaminius was just the kind of man he could lure into a trap. <laughs> Hannibal led Flaminius. To it's kind of insane that he ran the same gambits like six times. <laughs> He just showed up in Rome, fucking battered and bruised, and then just ran the same tricks and just kept fucking owning Romans. The entrance of a narrow pass. Along Romans the are frauds, bro. Lake Trasimene. Flaminius watched as Hannibal's army entered the pass. I've done it. I've spotted the enemy. Uh, sir, that big follow us sign seems kind of like they're trying to lure you in. Yes, Gareth. And I'm taking the bait. <laughs> Sir, this really seems like a trap. <laughs> yes, Gareth. And I'm falling for it. <laughs> Daylight was fading. So for now, the Romans set up camp. The two armies encamped across the lake from one another. And night fell over the two camps. In the morning, Flaminius would catch up to Hannibal. And he would be the hero of Rome. Okay. For now, the Romans got nice and comfortable. Get a good sleep this time. Beds. Eat pancakes. Good night, Flaminius. Good night, Rome. Good evening, Hannibal. During the night, Hannibal ordered total stealth. Dude, he actually is the goat. As tens of thousands of troops scaled the wooded hills above the pass, completely undetected by Rome's scouts. Insanely bad scouting. <laughs> If he's moving 10,000 troops and your scouts aren't noticing it, 
They're fucking shit. Let's go, girls. Flaminius took off across the lake shore to try no to way. catch Hannibal. As he did, even the weather seemed to be on Hannibal's side. A thick fog rose from the surface of the lake, obscuring visibility. <laughs> Look at this. This is perfect. That's crazy. Hannibal will never see me coming. Hopefully you don't get encircled. Sir? Why does it sound like 50,000 Carthaginians are charging down the hill towards us? You mean 50,000 Carthaginians are charging... It's crazy how many, uh... There's like many battles of history, if you look at it, are decided by random chances of weather. Maybe this isn't decided by it, but it helped. Like, there's so many times that, uh... Japan was about to be invaded, and then there's like a huge typhoon <laughs> that takes out like a hundred fucking boats, <laughs> thousand boats. And it's like, if that typhoon didn't exist, all of their history would be different. Uh, it's just crazy. Napoleon, yeah, yeah, the UK as well, yeah, yep, yep. Right into my trap! The Romans found themselves completely hemmed in on all sides with zero visibility. God is Japanese fog. confirmed. The was terrifying yeah. and chaotic. Troops were pushed into the lake in their heavy armor where they were either cut down or drowned. And Flaminius, who likely stood out like a sore thumb in his consul attire, caught the attention of one Celt warrior with his head possibly swirling with thoughts of how the Romans had decimated his homeland. According to the ancient writers, this Celt took his chance. Oh, shit! In the three-hour-long massacre, 15,000 Romans were killed and an equal number captured. Yikes! The army completely wiped Yikes. out. Yikes! With their consul. What a During dominant the battle, victory! The had managed to break through at the front and climbed the hill above the fog. When the Bro, that ratio is crazy for a melee combat fight. <laughs> Where all men are of relatively equal strength and have similar armor and weapons. That's crazy. That is completely owned. Because you, you could have such a drastically better economy, but if you're losing 30,000 to 2,000, there's no way. It's complete L. It's just un... You can't... Completely wiped out along with their consul. It's a stack the battle, pipe, yeah. The Roman vanguard had managed to break through at the front and climbed the hill above the fog. When the mist cleared, what they saw was a blood red lake and a sea. Jesus of Christ. Roman bodies. <laughs> Worse yet, when the other consul sent cavalry to try to aid Flaminius's doomed legions, they too were caught and defeated. A double. This is a, this is a major L. This is a full on panic. <laughs> Yeah, this is <laughs> Rome yeah. into a frenzy. Uh, For the second time, Hannibal had completely decimated an entire Roman army. Romans were dying by the tens of thousands. Common citizens began flocking to the city for safety. Women waited by the city gates in tears, hoping to hear news of loved ones. This one man, having just led his battered army across the Alps the previous year, now stood less than a hundred miles from Rome. To this point, he had been a problem. Now, Hannibal was a crisis. And in a crisis, Rome took desperate measures. They actually had a system in place when dealing with an emergency of this magnitude. They I'm sure it's not stupid. They would forgo power sharing system and instead temporarily give one man near total power and authority to be as decisive as he needed and hopefully salvage the situation. This all-powerful position in Rome's government had a name, Dictator. It's actually <laughs> where we get the word. But unlike modern dictators, Roman ones didn't score perfect rounds of golf or ride bears through the Siberian tundra. They held their power for just six months before they were required to give it up. And in Rome's... And I'm sure they always league, did. The man chosen to be dictator in 217 BC, one of the most highly esteemed members of the Roman Senate, Fabius Maximus. So how would Fabius, as dictator, confront Hannibal? Well, Fabius understood that marching all of Rome's young men straight into a one-man meat brand <laughs> was bleeding Rome dry. <laughs> Hannibal was clearly too dangerous that to is face a great way to describe it. battle. However, he was also stuck in their territory. 
With dwindling manpower and forced to live off the land, it wasn't a sustainable position to be in long term. Oh wait. He could only uh I think I've heard about this. Doesn't don't they like just stay in the cities or whatever? They like just don't they do not engage. They just <laughs> just like fucking Okay, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remain there yeah. for so long. So they just camp. If room avoided, they just camp. Cannibal to prevent any more crippling losses, and instead simply maneuvered around him, blocking supplies and taking out smaller contingents where possible. Hannibal would gradually become weaker, while they would gradually become stronger. Smart. And so Fabius presented his new idea to the Roman Senate. Probably okay, unpopular. Guys, I have an idea. See if you can follow me here. Okay. Instead of fighting Hannibal, when he approaches, we run away. Fabius's <laughs> <laughs> strategy couldn't have been. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> Romans were meant to march headfirst into battle, not run away from it. It seemed cowardly, and Fabius was extremely unpopular. At this point, Hannibal was continuing south. He had to stay on the move to keep his army fed, and he was still aiming to undermine Rome's alliances in the south. As he went, in a calculated display of aggression, he devastated the Roman countryside and killed many Romans, all in plain sight of Fabius and his army. That's We're fucked. just gonna stand here? Yes. Are you a coward? No. But Fabius, that's my farm. Well, McDonald, thank you for your sacrifice. You're a hero now. Think of the stories you'll tell. <laughs> Old McDonald had a farm. <laughs> Shut up. But you know who else hated Fabius's strategy? Hannibal. He understood the danger he was in. Turning Rome's allies against her required Hannibal to keep smashing the Romans in battle. He couldn't do that if Fabius wouldn't fight him. Multiple times, Hannibal tried to goad Fabius into a fight, but uh. Fabius wouldn't bite. Failing that, he tried to turn room against Fabius. I mean, the <laughs> thing is, you can't really encircle them if they don't charge at you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if they just stay there and see you coming, then you can't get encircled. And it really, it really puts him... <laughs> it's kind of a hard counter to his whole thing. According to the Finally got to learn how to play the game, Hannibal. All the farms he could, but any farm he learned was owned by Fabius himself. He left well alone. Hey, Fabius, why isn't he burning down your farm? You got some sort of a secret deal with him? That's Wait, such a funny way. Of course not. <laughs> hey, Hannibal! <laughs> what? Burn my farm too, please! What? Burn my farm too, please! It's actually kind of next level strats. Remember our secret <laughs> <Yeah>. deal! <laughs> well, you got to admit. He's a genius. <laughs> Hannibal's problem, however, was that he had to stay on the move to keep supplying his army from the local lands. At one point, he entered Campania, one of the richest regions of Italy, great for resupply and great for showing up Fabius in front of Rome's South Italian allies. But he was caught in a valley, and Fabius quickly moved to block his escapes. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh -oh. After he's used up all the valley's supplies, he'll starve. Uh, sir? What are all those lights leaving the valley? Is he trying to escape? Lights in plain view. Well, that's a trap if I've ever seen one. And we're falling for it! Suspecting a trap, <laughs> Fabius refused to budge. But other Romans in the valley rushed to confront Hannibal. Only to find the Carthaginian army was actually just a herd of oxen with torches tied to their heads. <laughs> they then found themselves caught. Damn, he really was like a fucking cartoon general, dude. He had some crazy shit. <laughs> he uh, he came up with some crazy tactics. That's wild. I had never heard about the fucking oxen with flaming ho horns. In an ambush, with the Romans distracted, Hannibal's army was able to slip away into oh the Oh my night. god, that's actually post. insane. Classic Hannibal. For all his That's action, insane. The dissatisfied Romans mockingly dubbed him Fabius the Delayer. But the thing is, Fabius's strategy was probably the best thing he could have done. 
He was right that constant encounters with Hannibal were bleeding Rome dry. And the time he took allowed Rome some breathing room to recover their forces when they desperately needed to, while putting Hannibal into an increasingly more difficult position. Modern historians view Fabius' strategy as generally a good idea. To this day, the act of not engaging an enemy, but instead gradually wearing them down, is still referred to as the Fabian strategy. But when Fabius's term finally came to an end, the Senate couldn't have been happier. It was time to start fighting again. However, they probably had a little chat about how they were going to go about it. See, Hannibal's tactics up until now had been very sneaky. Or, if you're a Roman, you might say dishonorable. Yeah. I'm sick of it. Every time we try to take this guy down, we march straight at him. But then, oh no, Hannibal's hiding in a bush. <laughs> Hannibal's got 30,000 men up a tree. At this point, I'm not convinced my wife isn't just Hannibal wearing a disguise. <laughs> Look, this time, we obviously have to switch something up. Now granted, we're Roman, so we're gonna march straight at him without thinking. That can't be helped. It's in our blood. But That's how I feel when I'm making a plan to solve a puzzle. <laughs> Step one, I have to do it exactly like I did last time. That's unnegotiable. But then also, let's add something new. Uh, I have a proposition. This time, when we march straight at him, we do it with a massive army. I'm talking like 80,000 men. Hell yeah! It won't matter what kind of shenanigans he pulls. He can hide in all the bushes he wants. There's no way he can possibly beat off 80,000 men. <laughs> Grow up. You know what I mean? And so it was. With two new consuls, Rome put together a massive army, the biggest Rome had ever fielded, to put Hannibal away once and for all. To gather the men required, two thirds of them ended up being completely inexperienced. But sure, how that's much not a problem. Does it take to be expendable war fodder? As this massive army set out in the summer of 216 BC, the Romans knew they needed to win this Yeah, I mean, he loses one, it's kind of... Just one victory over Hannibal would likely be enough to end his entire campaign. And this time, their overwhelming manpower gave them confidence they could do it. Hannibal had taken position at the town of Cannae, where he had captured an important Roman supply depot. With Fabius gone... Hannibal knew that battle was likely coming, ah. and he was eager to fight it on his terms. But when his men looked out at the Roman camp, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. That army's huge! There's no way we can possibly beat off all these men! How are we gonna beat off all of these men? <laughs> you know what I mean. I think he's right, Hannibal. Hannibal is then said to have replied, Gisco, my friend, don't worry. There may be a lot of them, but amongst their ranks, there's not a single man named Gisco. This oh, shit. Joke was apparently so funny <laughs> that his officers began to laugh and laugh. And when his men in the camp heard the laughter, they were like, hey, they're laughing. I guess that means we're going to win the battle. That is confidence Yay! inspiring. As for the Romans, the consuls were another VIP him. an inexperienced hothead and a wise scholar. Although the main historian from this era was good friends with Paulus's family. So take that with a grain of salt. On his day of command, the rash and hasty Varro, despite the apparent pleas from Paulus, sent the army out for battle. And How many times? Saw this, he did the same. Oh, God. And here comes the single largest battle of the Second Punic War and one of the most renowned battles in history, the infamous Battle of Cannae. In all the pre-battle maneuvering, Hannibal was able to ensure his army was fighting from the south. This meant the seasonal dust-carrying winds were oh, teams shit. back <laughs> and blowing directly into the faces of the Romans. Like I said, control. <laughs> After two years in Italy, Hannibal's infantry had dwindled to about 40,000. The Romans possibly outnumbered him two to one. Okay. Their army was so big that their maniples stretched far deeper than they normally would. That doesn't the matter, Romans though. planned to charge Hannibal's thin, weak line like a battering ram and break it. They also chose a narrow battlefield in the hopes it would prevent Hannibal's far superior cavalry from being able to outmaneuver. Okay, them. it makes sense. They wanted an honorable battle where pure strength rather than trickery 
would decide. I hope they don't get encircled. If Hannibal had his say, however, <laughs> trickery might end up having a lot to do with I it. I hope they don't he get encircled. Like to position themselves as an outward bulge with his weakest troops at the very center. Just behind them, out of sight from the Romans, stood the elite Libyan infantry, waiting for their moment to strike. The battle commenced as the massive Roman troops smashed into the Carthaginian center. The shape of Hannibal's line ensured the overwhelming weight of the Romans hit his weakest troops first, and they were pushed back. Hannibal's okay. outward bulge reversed inward, with the Romans <laughs> being funneled in towards the weak center. Hannibal had positioned himself at the center to encourage the troops to hold out as long as possible against the Roman onslaught. Because while the Romans were unleashing carnage on the center, Hannibal's cavalry needed time to do their job. Mm -hmm. The heavy cavalry on the left, after a barbaric fight, sent the Roman horse packing with the consul Polis, even sustaining a severe head injury. Polis he dropped the ball to here. Move into the center to keep the battle going. He had to hold that line. Then the heavy cavalry turned and approached Varro's cavalry from behind. Oh, no. At the first sight of the coming Carthaginian envelopment, Varro ordered his horsemen to flee the <laughs> battlefield. The Carthaginians had won the cavalry battle. Oh, but he's doing center, it again. According to some accounts, Hannibal's line did eventually end up caving to the massive weight of the Romans, and they began to flee. The Romans pushed deeper, and organization within the army likely broke down as they became a giant mass trying to massacre the fleeing Carthaginians. They didn't realize that they were playing right into Hannibal's hands. At that moment, Hannibal's elite units, having done no fighting yet, and therefore fresh as a daisy, turned and smashed into the Roman sides. Yikes! Many of these troops were wearing Roman helmets and armor they had picked up after previous battles, and the confused Romans may not have even realized they Ah, the dirty tricks! Hannibal managed to regain the composure of his center and encourage them back into the fight. The Carthaginian cavalry <laughs> swooped in from behind. And look at what lies before you. A military uh, general's wet dream. He's a cheeser, dude. He's a weasley little liar. By a much smaller force, the Romans were trapped. A fucking Hannibal circle. It all comes back. They managed to use their own superiority in numbers against them. Rather than simply encircling them, he had actually allowed them to use their own immense power and push themselves <laughs> into an encircled He's the go. And hey, you know what? I fear not the man who's practiced a thousand kicks once, you know what I'm saying? But one kick a thousand times. He really is the master of the circle. Okay, he does it better than anyone else. He really is the goat uh, of the circle strat, dude. This was the genius of Kenai. And with that, the annihilation began. For hours, the Carthaginians slaughtered the helpless Romans Jesus from Christ. both sides. The terrified Romans were so tightly packed that at times they couldn't even lift their arms to defend themselves. That's the killing went on insane. so long that the Carthaginians became exhausted from the non-stop <laughs> massacre. And by That's the time insane. the victory came to an end, the grim toll spoke for itself. What an L! To Hannibal, several thousand lost. The what, what was it? What happened? <laughs> if I was that, uh, dude, who was the dictator? What was his name? Fabius or whatever? <laughs> uh, this is a big I told you so moment, dude. This is a big, oh, interesting. No, what'd you do after I was gone? You kicked me out? 80,000 men, huh? You crushed them, right? Sure, it went great. Uh, Roman suffered 60 to 80,000. That's so dead fucking crazy. Captured. Yet another entire army That's crazy. by Hannibal. Many high ranking Romans met their end at Cannae. Yeah, that's the Polis, for one, but also 80 senators and more. It's been estimated that 20% of Rome's male population aged 18 to 50. That's insane. At Cannae. That's insane. This was it? Hannibal's vengeance. The stunned Carthaginians, as they searched for their own survivors among the dead, couldn't believe the sight of it. An That's estimated insane. 30, That's gallons of crazy. Blood now lay spilled on the battlefield. What an L! Rome's defeat at Cannae sent shockwaves throughout Italy. Yeah, that's 
That's Just it. As Hannibal had hoped. You can't. Most of southern Italy now defected to his side, including the second largest city on the peninsula. Wow. Hannibal, this is incredible. What could possibly come next? Next? Jim Bob. I've killed 150,000 <laughs> Romans. I that's so her crazy. Against her. That's it. <laughs> He that's did get vengeance. vengeance. I mean, that's vengeance. So let me tell you what comes next. Rome surrenders. Their territories are reduced. We recover our lost islands. Make them pay silver. Make them pay and silver. Carthage dominates the Mediterranean once again. But sir, what if they don't surrender? Jim Bob, did you miss what just happened? Of course they're going to surrender. Throughout his campaign, Hannibal had shown himself to be very adept at reading the Roman mind. But if he now thought that Rome might surrender, it was the first time he severely underestimated them. And he was about to discover an extremely inconvenient fact about Rome. Rome never surrenders. Oh, shit. At a Roman survivor's camp near Cannae, one young officer overheard some troops discussing how they would flee Rome. Drawing his sword, he threatened to cut down any man that would abandon Rome in its hour of need. That officer was Scipio the Younger. But soon enough, the Romans would come to call him Scipio Africanus, Ooh. the hero of Rome. Ooh. Oh, really? Wait, what? Oh, no! Wait, it's not out yet. Oh no, I shouldn't have watched this. Oh, it could be a million years, dude. He cliffhangered me on Scipio Africanus. Fuck. Fuck, dude.